Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who know me, you know I'm fairly sensible, some may say boring, vanilla, and that was kind of like the Ionic 5. It was looking like it was from the 80s like me, but it was a very sensible kind of electric vehicle SUV family car, whereas this is a bit like my alter ego for those that know me really well. Sometimes there's a little bit of um, craziness in there, and my alter ego is called Eric. And this is the Ionic 5N. It can still be sensible, but it has a lot of spark in it as well. A real first electric hot hatch. We've had the MG4. We've had performance electric vehicles like the Mustang Mach-E GT. We've had the sister cousin, the Kia EV6 GT, the Tesla Model Y performance before you jump into the commons. But today we're gonna to look around the outside, the inside and do as much legal driving as we can. There are plenty of other track videos out there and if you haven't already watched them, go and watch them if you're planning on taking it to the track and seeing the full capability of the Ionic 5N. But today, it's more about if you bought this as your daily driver, what else can you get out of it? It's an amazing car, one of my favorite electric vehicles that I've ever reviewed. Yes, recency bias is there, but I really, really like this car. I've only had 24 hours with it. Let's get stuck into it. Comes in about eight different colors. Some are metallic, some are matte, and today we are with the racing blue. And it, with the new electric N division with Hyundai, we are getting, instead of a red accent, we're getting this kind of a luminous orange accent. I really like it. So I like the color. Some people were comparing it to Gulf racing kind of colors, but um, yeah, I think it's real eye catching on the road. You can get it a bit more subdued. Can you get it deleted with the orange? I don't know. I'll find out and I'll put it into this onto the screen below. But anyway, on the um, front of the bonnet, you have a flat black Hyundai badging. It's very similar styling in some elements to the, reg uh, to the original, the OG Ionic 5. Then underneath that, then you've got your glass black with your 360 degree camera. You've got your N badging here, so you start to identify, okay, this is something a little bit different. You've got your beautiful pixelated lights like we have on the regular Ionic 5. Uh, and this in the regular Ionic 5 is an illuminated kind of panel, but it's all about air getting cooling into that battery. So it is, this is a slotted vent. You've got your indicator that it is N with that luminous orange glass black then all the way down at the bottom here you've got a lot of venting going on on the regular ionic 5 it's two uh, automatic uh, vent uh, air intakes on the n version it's three so it's about getting as much air into that battery to cool it down if you are using it hard and then all along the bottom of the car you've got that aluminous orange down the side you've got some uh, air curtains that direct the air over the wheel. Drag coefficient is 0.23 so it is, uh, as much as it's stylistically a bit more aggressive looking, um, dimensionally it is a couple of uh, centimetres longer, a couple of centimetres lower but it is a couple also a couple of centimetres wider as well. But front on some really nice clear crisp uh, and if you remember from my very first Ionic 5 review, you'll understand that this is a uh, clamshell bonnet. Let's have a look on the inside because there is no front, but I just want to show you what's inside there. Inside the bonnet, there's a release at the front and it's all M cladding, so there is no front inside this at all. I think they've just decided, you know what? Uh, with the dual motor, with the ex external speaker that's required, and you, you can turn that off as well. We'll talk about that when we're out driving. Let's leave this as is. The utilization of frunks is questionable. Some people really like it. Some people never open up that bonnet. Uh, so there is no frunk on our front storage area on the Ionic 5N. Down along the side, and you can see that kind of metallic gray finish on the bumper that comes from the front all the way along the side for that air curtain. You've got 21 inch forge wheels and it's a serious brake system here. You've got a 400 millimeter brake disc with a four pot caliper brake on the front and a 360 millimeter brake on the back. These are on 27535 uh, ZR21s. They're a specific model and make of tire for, from Pirelli for the Hyundai Ionic 5N or Hyundai Ionic 5N. You've got that wider wheel arch and then you've got that very distinctive uh, slashing accents going on in that you have on the Ionic 5. You've got your gloss black wing mirror with that indicator built in, your pop-out door handles body colored, and their keyless entry, keyless start. 
glass black with that orange illuminating down the side, glass black B pillar. This is, has a glass sunroof. In Ireland, we only have one trim. I think in some markets, I saw a review in North America and they didn't have a sunroof, also didn't have a head up display, but we do on this model. Uh, and then you can see more aero stuff going on down the side here. The lovely little kick with the end badging down at the side here as well. So overall, side on, you probably wouldn't know that it was an N if you didn't have the orange badging on it. But there are a couple of cues like these flared wheel arches, like this spoiler that we're going to talk about once we go around about the back. But yeah, it's a design I really like and people thought it might date uh, the Ionic 5, but I think it's standing the test of time. So far, it's only been a couple of years and it's great to see them bringing out an N version of it. Let's have a look around the back. Down along the back, you have an 80 millimeter longer spoiler on the top. You've got that central, really F1 inspired brake, high level brake lamp. You have a window wiper. Some people spotted this when I posted this on social media. You don't get a window wiper on the regular Ionic 5. So people are like, oh, I need to change my Ionic 5 to the end version so I can get the wiper. So great to see the wiper coming back. Uh, and actually vis visibility out of the rear is not bad. You do have a reversing um, camera in the wing mirror, sorry, in the rear view mirror, but in the camera's up here. So if you do want that, if there's people sitting in the back, got this beautiful pixelated light bar with that black Ionic 5 rewarding and the Ionic 5 in matte black badging. Uh, you've got your silver trim, you've got your illuminate orange. And then down here, you've got your checkered, starting to see this checkered design language, gloss black and a real aggressive diffuser with a fog light in underneath here, 360 degree camera, parking sensors, bit of gloss black going on, but overall end badging here as well. Boot is decent, 480 litres. It's wide, it's deep, not the highest in the world. Uh, and the subfloor is fairly limited with regards to because there is a lot more going on. But either side, you've got your vehicle to load adapter, you've got your charging cables. It's a 60 40 split, and you can slide the seat forwards if you do want more. But it has a boot cover as well. So, practicality, and that's what I was talking about at the very beginning. It's a bit like me, it's practical, it needs to be. Let's have a look on the inside. Charging on the Ionic 5 is 11 kilowatt in AC and then on DC up to 320 kilowatts, so 10 to 18% in 18 minutes if you can get a fast enough charger. You've got your indicator here and your powered flap. As we talked about the ability to move these seats forward and back. So it's a 60 40 split, but it's a nice simple rail. And you can see how far forward that goes if you really want space in the boot. Now, it doesn't lock this far forward. You need to bring it back a small bit. But if you had stuff that was filling up the boot to keep compression on it, but that's the lock position there. Um, that seat is set for me. I'm six foot two, 188 centimeters. Let's close the door. Um, great leg room. Feet room is a bit, because the seat is actually lower than the current Ionic 5 feet in underneath. Now, it's not bad. I've got large shoes there. A size 11. You've got your handle, coat hook, light. You've got your built-in blinds. Again, practicality. Your nice door handle. You've got some nice stitching element. In the B pillar is your, um, your vent. You've got some end badging on the back. I know the front of the end badge on the seats uh, illuminate. I'm not sure the rear does, but I'll put some footage in if it does. No pockets in these seats. Center console, two USB type C's. Somebody commented when they saw my internal pictures on social media that do you get the air fryer free? I'm not sure if they're talking about the central armrest or the front new console piece, but totally flat floor. And then in underneath, you've got your uh, vehicle to load, uh, power socket adapter in underneath that as well. Two USB, oh, sorry, I always say USB, two Isofix, and you have armrest with cup holders, and you've got three tether points in the back of that as well. Large pano sunroof that there is a blind on coming all the way back here, but headroom, they've done a nice job of actually the concave of the roof not touching it there there's a couple of centimeters one or two centimeters between but yeah good space in the back and as much as there's a small bit of uh, lowering of the seat still very roomy in the back of the ionic 5n let's have a look in the front child lock brilliant in the front of the Hyundai Ionic 5N, you've got that nice stitching on the top here. It's not too crazy. Now, don't get me wrong, steering wheel is pretty crazy. Seats are beautiful as well. On the door, you've got that checkered design on the actual side panel. You've got all your controls, decent sized door bin. You've got a Bose um, speaker system and that checker plate that we saw on the rear with the end badging as well. 
some ambient lighting, good thunk to the door. Seats, amazingly bolstered, N illuminated badge in the front. Yeah, I don't think they illuminate on the rear. Some light blue stitching, very similar to the powder blue, or sorry, the racing blue on the outside. You've got your armrest here that moves forward and back, but there's a lot of gap here, and that's to do with if you are driving it aggressively around the track, they don't want anything to impede your actual elbow and stuff like that. This is different from the current Ionic 5. Now you've got your charging pad, you've got your dual charging socket, whether it's charging or data, you've got your 12 volt, you've got your Qi wireless charging, parking camera sensors, um, 12 volts on the front, apologies. Another charger here, your cup holders down here, but there's a little arm, uh, sorry, knee pad rest. So when you are needing to go around a corner with certain Gs, somebody's asking me what kind of G force am I getting on the this week uh, or the, the, in the day that I have it it is uh, unfortunately didn't get it to a track the seats are manually adjusted and the reason that they did that is they couldn't get the electronics in to make it electronically adjusted and have the seat lower so the seat itself is about one inch lower nearly an inch lower at the knee point at the top of the seat but it's a nearly two inches lower at the bottom so you're really hunkered down and these uh, side bolstered seats really help with that whole driving experience push button start you've got your um i'm not sure if you can pick that up but i have it on with the sound mode we'll talk about that when we're out driving so you can uh, let me put it into uh, that's my android auto kicking in that's martin from ev news daily so if i want to super cruise driving assist technology mm -hmm, turn you down again there we go so you can here we go listen <laughs> and uh yeah i've i've really enjoyed it oh that's my favorite one there's a couple of different sounds we're getting lost we're getting stuck in it uh so steering wheel is three spoke uh, on the left hand side is your driving assist with your drive modes you've got regen paddles behind but you can also turn that into a simulated eight speed uh, gearbox you've got your end buttons down here to do customizations there's 17 different modes in this thing it is so customizable you've got your ngb button and some people are asking me in the social when they saw the internal pictures what's the orange button for that stands for ngrin boost and uh, you've got your mode buttons and your audio stuff on the right hand side behind that on the left stalk you have your lights on the right stock you've got your wipe wipers and then underneath that you've got your mode selector your drive reverse neutral park very similar behind the wheel to the current ionic 5 uh, but the steering wheel itself and then all of the extra buttons uh, over my right knee you've got your automatic handbrake the ability to open the power tail lift so as much as this is a car that will do zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.4 seconds has over 601 brake horsepower with the end boost for 10 seconds brings you up to 641 you still have a power tail lift like mad the practicality is amazing head up display you can change the display on that way you want it race mode or regular mode so there's a lot of different things that you can do it's a two 12.3 inch screens android auto and apple carplay now wireless which is phenomenal um and then on that there's a full customization with regards to the end stuff so we're going to bring the camera in and go through all of that with you so a couple of different settings here on the menu you have end torque distribution and you can actually where you want the torque you can make it a fully rear wheel drive front wheel drive and there's 11 different settings in total and pedal will start to really use the regenerative braking for driving and when you lift it off you can actually um it will be all about the regenerative braking used to move the weight of the car forward it's not about regeneration back into the battery and race then is you can see then you have to make sure that you sign up to all this kind of stuff and drift optimizer um again you have to sign into all this kind of stuff so you can turn this on turn this off um and so oh, accelerator pedal what percentage is percent pressed on that the brake pedal so when this is on your lap timer you can actually sign up to circuits uh, depending on what circuits you're in it's phenomenal it really is phenomenal then the battery mode you can have drag mode or you can have track mode and if you set drag mode it'll say it needs to heat up the battery between 20 30 and 40 percent the current battery is too hold it's 42 minutes to get it optimized you want track mode it's slightly less between 20 and 30 celsius it's going to take 21 minutes so they're not messing about with this kind of stuff and then over here you can see all your different settings you've got your uh, eco your normal your sport and your sport plus you've got your steering and then on the actual screen itself it'll show you what mode you're in your suspension normal sport or sport plus 
uh, your limited slip diff. So there's torque vectoring in the front and electronic limited slip diff in the rear, normal, sport or sport plus, your electronic uh, stability, your head up display, whether you want it in sport or whether you want it in normal, uh, and then your sounds. Uh, so we'll go through that in a second to hear the different sounds. You've got launch control, you've got your G-force meters. Yeah, there's so much customization in it. Uh, your launch control, whether you want high grip, low grip, medium grip. Your E-shift is all to do with the utilization of the paddles, the active sound. So, ignition, regular ignition, evolution, and supersonic. Uh, road sense, activate, battery precondition, end pedal, end drift optimizer, end race, end torque distribution. Like it's, there's so much to be playing around with and uh, the setting on it. And then if I bring you over to the actual, uh, let me take the camera off altogether and show you what it looks like. You can see I've got front and rear motor temperatures. I've got outside temperature, I've got battery temperature. Yeah, and you can see on the top right hand corner there, suspension, steering, etc. But yeah, there's so much cost customization on it. It's amazing. Underneath that, then you've got your HVAC system. Yeah, really good. The only other thing that's changed then between this and the current Ionic 5, and I know we know that the Ionic 5 is getting a uh, facelift, is it's gone from a drawer to a traditional uh, glove box. Head unit, you've got your internal sensors, your lights, etc., your SOS button, nice. Uh, ambient lighting as well and then you've got your blind up on top for the sunroof so yeah really nice place to be but now that we've done the exterior now that we've done the interior you're probably going down will you bring it out for a drive that's the only thing i'm interested in yeah there's chapters down below if you wanted to jump forward to that but i think it's important to have a look around the whole car as much as this driving of this is going to be hugely important the practicality of it the justification of it at home uh, husband wife whatever it may be if you want something a little bit sporty you have to also tick a number if you're a family or you're carrying people in the car on a regular basis um, and i think this ticks a lot of boxes it's not just a weekend hot hatch for the sake of it and it's not practical in other sense this is a, a this is an all-rounder with that little extra spice um we're going to take it out for a drive that's what we're going to do <laughs> every time and then there's a simulated gear change as well and you get a little kick and it does a couple of pops as well when you oh yeah i've smiled so much in the last 24 hours um and there'll be people jumping into the comments saying oh how can you call it a hot hatch or evs are soulless do not comment on this video unless you've driven this car about the driving style. You can comment and say that you like it and you're looking to buy it, absolutely. Comments are good, but don't be coming in comment and saying, oh, this isn't a real car, blah, blah, blah. Please, go and look at some of the track videos. Um, some amazing uh, presenters, journalists have done some amazing videos on this car around the track and I haven't seen a negative one yet. Yes, some of them think that the sounds are a bit gimmicky and the, the gear shifts and all that kind of stuff, but you know what? It's a hugely positively well re uh, well received electric vehicle and the end division of Hyundai need to be applauded. And that whole legacy of where that end division came from and when Hyundai brought over uh, the gentleman that was responsible for the M3 and BMW, they haven't just put extra power into it, they really, really thought about it. Was it like driving the Hyundai Ionic 5N? The smile kind of says it all. We're here up in the Wicklow Mountains Let's do launch control, why wouldn't we? Uh, NG boost, we're ready. Um, ready, three, two, one. 80 kilometers an hour. Yeah, so launch control is good. And a lot of people are asking if, <sighs> let me just compose myself there for a second. <laughs> A lot of people were asking if I was going to bring it to a track, and no, unfortunately not, I wasn't able to. It was a last minute, got the call, able to move things around, I was able to take the car. It's towards the end of the day, we're fighting light here at the moment. But it's been a phenomenal couple of hours with the 5N. Really enjoyed it. Haven't stopped smiling since. Let's go through all of the bits and pieces. It's very similar with regards to visibility, the, uh, highway driving assist, all those safety features are there. So a day-to-day -day driver, and we will talk about that. Um, it's been really good, 
really, really good, no problems at all. But when you want to go into the end side of the business and have that horsepower, phenomenal. Price in Ireland for the Ionic 5N is at €79,995. It's the most powerful Hyundai ever. Uh, 601 horsepower, which is equivalent to 442 kilowatts across both axles and giving you 788 newton meters of torque. Uh, with the N Grin Boost button pressed, that jumps up to 641 horsepower uh, and also 471 kilowatt for 10 seconds. It's an 84 kilowatt hour battery with a 448 WLTP range. I was seeing efficiencies as low as 15 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers around town. And then when you were going a bit more spirited, it was up in 29.30. So it's a hard one to quantify. Competition, it is up against the likes of the Tesla Model Y performance at 64,000. The ID5 GTX at 70. The Enyaq RS at 74. EV6 GT then is above it in price at 85,000 euros. Mustang Mach E GT at 94,000 euros. Porsche Taycan, 110,000 euros. The Audi SQ8 Sportback e tron at 125 and then the Audi RS e tron at 148,000 euros. So slap bang in the middle and I think it's phenomenal. The steering wheel has been excellent. Uh, and the fact that you can change the weight of it and how you like it, all inside this other menu, you can go into steering. It's on Sport Plus at the moment, back to normal. It loosens up a bit, but put it into Sport Plus. And it is tight. It, the car feels like it's on rails. Now, it is stiffer suspension than the traditional, the regular Ionic 5. Uh, it has a totally reworked um, front suspension. Everything in there is new, and it has a, a, a tinkered rear suspension. It's got torque vectoring on the front. It's got electronic limited slip diff on the rear. Uh, they've used, I think it's 48 extra weld points, 6.7 meters extra of um, adhesive. And so it's 11% the torsional the torsion the structural tension torsion on the structure uh, jump into the comments and let me know what I'm trying to say here is 11% stiffer more taut uh, it, they've even got steel members in the real wheel arches just to get everything really tight so this isn't just an increase the electrical uh, the increase the electric motor or power or stick a second one in they've really really worked on it uh, head up display a couple of different options it's a normal uh, and then it is in you can put it into and now <laughs> I'm after changing the head up display to more of a racy mode of things and so you can see our G meter here but also you'll start to hear the noise I don't know how that's going to come across on camera but I've really enjoyed look at the smile I've really enjoyed it and you can hear it and not there's the changes the, the, the shift up the kick up the shift up and the kick down it is the car actually like you, you hear it popping as it's all this is automatically downshifted but i can use the pedals bring it down to two see rev limiter second gear and so if i want to drive it normally you can drive it normally and then you can just put it back into auto mode and it'll run through it themselves. But I've really, really enjoyed... Look at this thing. It is like a roller coaster. Yeah. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Addictive. It's a real electric hot hatch. Not a hatch either because it's an SUV. You hear the drone shift there so fun so lots of we talked about that when we did this uh, when we were inside and we went through the whole thing but this thing is stuck to the road i can see the temperatures of my front motor my rear motor the battery temperature i can see go back to this screen i can see brake pedal accelerator pedal i'm at 10 percent eight percent brake pedal 15 percent there's a lap timer on there i've got that end torque distribution there's so much stuff that you can play around with, that you can tweak with. Every time, every time it shifts up or shifts down, every time there's a little pop or a gurgle. Childish, absolutely. Will some people find it a bit, I don't know. I've really enjoyed it. And anybody I brought for a spin in it today has really enjoyed it too. <laughs> I have another little pop. 
Um, so it is, you can, when you use the pedals, you can actually, it is at eight speed and it has been mapped the exact same way from the end division when they do that. So good. Okay, let's put it some, through some turns. Yeah, it's uh, like the throttle response. It's stuck to the road. It's so good. 275 tires really helping. The suspension's really good. Like this is a not a this is a this is the opposite to a smooth road. And yes, you can feel it, but do you know what? With these seats, with that center console. Today's been a good day. <laughs> Every time. Every time it gives a little rup. I can't keep recording because it's getting darker and darker. So much fun. Whoever gets this car, whoever buys this car, so you're not going to regret it. One of the best electric cars I've ever driven. So good. So good. But yeah, okay. Seats are great. Visibility isn't normal. Ionic 5, you're even a bit lower down. Uh, blind spot. Somebody was saying about the manual seats when I took them for a spin today. They were like, oh God, for 80,000 for a manual. And you don't, get, you don't get electronic seats. And I was explaining how the seat is lower because of it. But you still get a power tail lift. The convenience is there. Hopefully you've enjoyed my look around and drive of the Hyundai Ionic 5N. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I think you can tell by the smile on my face. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. It's divisive, but you know what? Anybody who's driven it, they know. I have not seen a single negative review about this car yet. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. I really enjoyed making this video. And it's something different. Fair play to Hyundai for actually putting this out there. For taking the time to get it right. You know what? People were saying that EVs, there's, there's no soul in them. There's soul in this car. So much so I think I'm after taking the wrong turn. And I don't know where I am in the Wicklow Mountains, but I'm okay with that because I'm driving this car. An amazingly addictive car. And if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, I know you're gonna enjoy that video too.